Ryan, are you in St. Pete's at this point? I, I've been watching you throughout the day, but because you guys are on the move, I wasn't even sure where you are. All right, take me there and tell me what you're seeing. Yeah, yeah, we are here in St. Pete, downtown St. Pete, just so you know, Ashley. And yeah, we, we've been hopping around all day, really all, all week. Uh, we went, you know, yesterday we were uh, in Madeira Beach, uh, we were in Treasure Island, you know, talking about some of the debris, which is obviously going to be a concern with how bad the winds are, right? With a lot of the debris still left over from Hurricane Helene and so many homes and businesses and communities still recovering from that storm and now having to evacuate and preparing for what we've seen here. I'll step out just a tad bit into the elements here so you can see. We're still getting a lot of these wind gusts. You know, Ashley, about an hour ago, hour and a half ago, I mean, these things were massive. Uh, we had reports of about 100 mile per hour wind gusts here in St. Petersburg. Egmont Key, which is in the water, basically one of the waterways, um, just, you know, about 20 minutes uh, of a boat ride from here, 40 minutes. That measured about 109 miles per hour. So we've seen a lot of the wind whipping up, especially, and there you go, another wind gust that's just come through downtown St. Peter. The flooding's going to be concerned, and I heard you talking about this, Ashley. We got reports that there were five inches of rain in St. Petersburg in just one hour. Five inches, 10 inches in three hours in total. That rain is the reason why there is surge and flood warnings that are happening until 2.30 in the morning. And we're approaching high tide. 6 a.m. is when high tide is in this area. And St. Petersburg and Tampa Bay are filled with so many low-lying communities that are vulnerable to not just the surge that we talked about with the storm, but the flash flooding. And when folks do get an opportunity to wake up tomorrow morning, and see you know their homes and kind of what's left you're going to see a lot of flooding you're going to see a lot of the damage from uh, the debris that's flying into homes and a lot of people were wondering and, and told me today one guy who's been here for 36 years says i don't know what i'm going back to when i come back to my home because he ended up evacuating and heeding those warnings so actually a lot of wind we've heard pops from transformers that have been breaking here and popping throughout the neighborhood as well luckily we still have power where we are uh, but lights just flickered there so a lot of people 1.6 million i think now in the state of florida without power. So uh, there are 43,000 linemen uh, on standby, Governor Ron DeSantis has said, to come in and try and restore that power once this storm passes. Uh, but we're not there yet, Ashley. We've got a few more hours of this thing before uh, we're free and clear of Milton, which obviously has lashed us pretty good. So well, I just need to reiterate what you just said, that five inches of rain fell in one hour. And then I think you said 10 inches in three hours. And the banner on the bottom of the screen says 10 to 16 inches of rain has already fallen in, in Tampa St. Pete. I need you to sort of clarify for viewers, though, because, again, we hear of the, about people who say, I'm staying, I'm, I'm, I'm riding it out, I'm not leaving, I've been through hurricanes before. And we expect that when they heed these you know, warnings, you're going to die in your home, which is what one of the, the mayors told her residents, we expect that it might look different than what it looks like behind you. We expect that when we hear about 10 to 16 inches of rain falling already, you would be up to your, your chin. So help the viewers understand why it looks different where you're standing than what the picture uh, really is and what the stats are really reporting out. So the reason why it looks different where I am, Ashley, I'm at 50 feet of elevation in the center of the peninsula of St. Petersburg. That's why. I'm in downtown St. Pete. I'm in a higher elevation of area. If you joined us a few hours ago, I know you mentioned watching some of our live shots. We were out at um, the St. Pete Pier, which was being lashed with a lot of those waves and a lot of that, that water from the bay that was coming over the wall, the seawall. Um, and that's a lot of what we, we've seen. So where I am, but there's still some flooding. I mean, if I step out here for a second, you know, you've got a little bit of these floodwaters here that are starting to form in some of the streets here, Ashley. So, you know, we are getting a little bit of the flooding here, but when you've got so many low-lying areas, and for people that aren't familiar with Tampa St. Petersburg, uh, this is the number one area in the entire country that's prone to storm surge. Number one of any city, of any area in the continental U.S. And so that is the main concern. And so when you're talking about 10 to 16 inches of rainfall, that's going to continue to stockpile especially when we get to high tide. We're not even on high tide yet. That's at six in the morning. We've got hours and hours of this water continuing to rise across Tampa Bay. That's gonna to continue to raise these floodwaters. So that's the biggest concern. And while you may not be seeing it here behind me and seeing a lot of the rainwaters and the winds, I guarantee you, in some of the neighborhoods we went in this morning and last night, they're covered in rainwater right now. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.